Hey Construction Legends, so today I'm going to talk in this video about exactly what you need to do if your client or your head contractor or whoever's above you in the contractual chain, so if you're the subcontractor, the GC, the main contractor, goes out of business, what do you need to do to make sure that you get paid or give you the biggest chances of getting paid? So hi, my name is Keen Brennan. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the CEO of a company called Quantum Contract Solutions. So we help construction companies sign better contracts, have better cash flow, get paid, avoid disputes. Ultimately, all those things help you maintain and improve your project margin. And so the reason we make these videos is because there's so many construction companies out there that make horrific contractual mistakes, or they don't know how to manage things contractually and end up losing lots of money. And we don't want you to be one of them. So let's get in. So what's the problem we're dealing with? As we speak, I hope someone's not coming along to this later on, but we're after after COVID, we're in a period where there is rising inflation in the economy and we're seeing firsthand of our clients lots of construction companies going out of business, a lot of panic, a lot of people jumping on the calls with us, like, what are we going to do? What's our strategy? And it's happening over and over and over again. And you can see in the newspaper, like there's you just have to Google insolvencies. Uh, there was one article that said 25% of all insolvencies since the beginning of the year have come from the construction industry. So it's a bit of an epidemic of construction companies going out of business. So let's briefly analyze why this has happened. As far as we can see, there's a couple of things. One is the first one, well, they all run into each other, right? So there's an inability to be able to resource a project and there's an inability to be able to get materials. So during COVID, most industries went contract, not so much the construction industry. So a lot of governments decided to pump money into the construction industry to, you know, if they're going to stimulate the economy, they may as well pump it into something where they get something at the end of it rather than just, you know, giving people people $1,500 each they spend on electronics that have come from overseas and the ultimate benefit goes out the door, right? Whereas if you spend it in construction, you might end up building a bridge or a road or a hospital or something that ends up being tangible over a longer period of time. And it's a better way to spend your capital allocation, your resources, if you're a government. So a lot of them did pump money into the construction industry. So actually a lot of construction companies as we came out of COVID and even during COVID did really well. They got lots of business, they won a lot of projects. And then what happened is in these projects, they started not very quickly starting to believe the signed a bad contract, most of them, and that has pushed a lot of risk onto them. And then what's happened is they're not able to deliver. And they haven't been able to deliver mainly because they haven't been able to get materials and they haven't been able to get people. There's the two things. There's been scarce. I don't know where the people are. They're nowhere, right? There's no people anywhere. I don't know where in the world that these people are, but everyone's struggling for resources. There's no people anywhere. And the materials, obviously, there's massive material delays. So that's delaying projects. And so let's give you an example of you've been delayed for materials. Let's just say you're a steel fabricator and you've ordered all of this steel to come in you spent two million dollars you got a loan of two million dollars to get this steel and your contract says you get paid when you supply and install it you don't get any money until it's installed and so you spent your two or three million dollars to get this steel and it's delayed massively so the money's out the door so you're paying the bank back that loan and you're not getting paid by your client because you haven't installed it and you're taking that cost on and these delays have been huge massive. And in addition to that, because you're late, you could potentially be getting hit with liquidated damages or, or costs or whatever, but you're delaying the project because you can't get some material. It's not necessarily your fault. And that's what's happening. And eventually a time will come where your cash flow goes down to zero and you go pop. That's one way construction companies are going out of business. Just quickly, if you got any sort of value from this video so far, the only ask I've got of you is we don't do any advertising. We don't make any money from this channel is that you just hit the subscribe button. So utter construction companies, people in construction can find the videos, save themselves money, avoid disputes and be contractually better as construction companies. Let's get back to it. The other way is because of these delays or other contractors delays because of you know the delay I just mentioned that your contract has been delayed so long that the prices you signed up for a year and a half, two years ago are loss making rates now. You are not making money on those rates. Everything's far more expensive. The rates you signed up for are not going to to give you a profit, basically. In fact, the more work you do, the more money you could end up losing, but you're tied into this contract. And that's another way people are going out of business. And then obviously not being able to get a people, the delays. Ultimately, what the GCs and main contractors tend to do is they squeeze people's cash flow in order to make a deal. And what's happening now is just people's cash flow. They just can't do it. They can't stay in 
their business and they go out of business. So that's kind of what's happening. And so from an industry wide looking at the whole situation, the main thing we have to consider is how do we keep our cash flow alive? How do we make sure that we get paid? And when your cash flow gets whittled down to nothing and get yourself in trouble, and if you're not getting paid, obviously it just makes the whole thing a lot worse. So that's really aggravating the situation. I'm sure a lot of you guys listening to this are in that situation. And so what can we do about it? Okay, so the first thing is in your contract before you sign it, you should have had a clause where you can terminate the contract for default. And that is terminate the contract if they don't pay you, right? A lot of contracts you wouldn't believe don't have that in there, but you want to be able in your own contract, if they don't pay you, you want to get out of the contract straight away. You don't want to go into month two, not having been paid, hoping fingers crossed that you will get paid because you mightn't. And as I say, there's a lot of companies going out of business. We heard of a company there recently that knew they were going out of business for three or four months and just kept the work going so that they would be able to, when they went insolvent, they'd have more work done and then be more valuable to them, even though they knew they couldn't pay their contract. So a lot of dodgy stuff going on. So you need to be able to get out of the contract. But then let's say you just get a notice, you get no told that you get wind of that the contract is going to go out of business. And so what actually happens from their side of it is, you know, accountancy firm will come in, a solvency firm will come in, they'll send all of these letters out to people saying, you know, this XYZ GC or main contractor is out of business and here are his debts and we'll get around to it, right? So they're going to ask you to follow a procedure, which is fine, but it's not saying you don't have to follow it, but it's not like this is the procedure, right? That's just the procedure they want you to follow. And so what a lot of people do is they give up and they think, oh, I'm not going to get paid here. So what we want you to do is actually follow their procedure. So, you know, sign the, the forms and just like we are a debtor and we do want our money basically. But also at the same time, just pretend the contract is still live. Keep putting in your applications for payments or your invoices or wherever your stage you are. Then do a dispute notice against them. Then send in letters against that. Basically, you want to kill them with paperwork. And what happens is the, in, the insolvency company are going to go through and they're going to go, who can we pay and who can we not pay? We only have X amount of money to pay people. And you want to be the company where they look at you and go, Gee, these guys these guys are all over it with the paperwork. If these guys actually take us to court, we are actually going to be in a position where we're going to have to pay them. So these guys will pay and we're not going to pay these guys. That's the decision that they're making. So if you can kill them with paperwork, submit letters saying, well, you need to be paid, submit notices of disputes according to the contract, compel the other guys to sit down and have me do everything exactly according to the contract so that when they look and they go, oh God, these guys are the squeaky wheel. We have to pay them. And that's that is the best way to get paid is to double down on payment to to get paid because otherwise they're just probably not going to pay you and they're going to see who's most likely do we have to pay we only have x amount of money they need to be paid we want to make sure that they choose you so kill them a paperwork that is definitely going to work out in your favor or more so in your favor than sitting there doing nothing hoping you're going to get paid so don't buy into their system don't buy into their way of doing things you can fill out their forms and do whatever it needs to be as long as it doesn't you don't agree to not get paid essentially but and then just in parallel submit all your letters submit everything just to get paid i hope that makes sense there's a lot of this happening at the moment and we don't want it to happen to you. If you can get in there with your paperwork before an insolvency company comes in before it, just do that. You're going to be in a much better position. I hope that's been useful and I'll catch you in the next video. Hey, Construction Legends, I hope you enjoyed that. If you want more of the same, please click here to have another cool video. And we've also got a full contract negotiation training course. It's six weeks everything you need to do to negotiate your own contract. It's a playlist. Click on it, go through all the training, and it'll make you way, way better and, and allow you to sign way less riskier contracts and set yourselves up for success. Okay, so choose one of them and go, for, go forth and conquer.